Ah, er, itchy. Ah, why you do this to me? Hi all and welcome back to my channel. And as requested, today we are going even deeper down the rabbit hole of 10 from 10 different brands. If you have not seen my first installment of this shiz talking about 10 best eyeshadow palettes from 10 different brands and 10 worst eyeshadow palettes from 10 different brands, I will leave those linked down accordingly. But today, obviously by the title and the thumbnail, we're gonna talk about some highlighter. I mean, at this point, if y'all are returning, you probably know that I could talk about highlighter every day. If I could figure out how to make enough content, I would talk about only highlighter on my channel. This video is probably gonna be a lot shorter than my eyeshadow palette one, just because they're a lot smaller. There's a little bit less to talk about. But today we're gonna be going through the best 10 highlighters from 10 different brands. There will be a worst, which yes, I have tried enough highlighter to have 10 worst experience. It hurts, it's painful, the video will be difficult to film, but I do it for y'all's highlighty entertainment. I'm gonna talk about some of the highlighters that I actually have with me. I am currently in Tennessee. I do not have the uh, entirety of my collection with me just because I didn't know how long I was gonna be here and I didn't want to move it cross state for nothing. So we're gonna talk about seven highlighters that I have on hand. We are going to swatch the ever-loving shiz out of these and then we'll end on three that I don't have on hand that are still on this list. Obviously, we're gonna be doing blushes. I would like to do face palettes. I would like to do, I don't know, we'll see how long I can take this theme and stretch it and milk it for all it's worth. So, in no particular order, we're gonna start off with Okay, so for this, this is this was a little bit more difficult than the eyeshadows, I will admit. Because I said to myself, Soraya, okay, you're good doing best. 10 from 10 different brands. You can't just get on here and be like, well, every highlighter shade in this formula is amazing. And although, while I definitely recommend you peep all of these formulas, I have narrowed it down to particular shades. So y'all can have a little clap clap, a little pat on the back for me, cause y'all know I am notoriously bad for being like, well, you know, it's not just this particular one, it's the whole range. Cause today we're gonna be talking about particular shades. And clearly these are shades you can take with a grain of salt depending on your complexion because your girl is the pasty pasty. So if you are someone even slightly deeper than a shade of, you know, slightly rosy paper, then I would recommend seeking out different shades in these ranges. But this is for me and my personal whatever and my preferences for the kind of shimmy shiny shades I like to put up on my cheekbones. So we're gonna start with an obvious one. We're gonna start off with Ofra. I have discussed this brand repeatedly and believe it or not I have actually worn the ever loving shiz out of this thing. You can hardly tell. There's like just a titchy bit of work going on in there because with this you only need just 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 a titchy bit. So this is the Ofra powder highlighter in Star Island which if you are pasty pasty tend to look a little bit vampiric year round. This is probably one of the most perfect pale person friendly golds that ever existed. It is absolutely stunning. If you are someone with mature skin, if you are someone that has texture that you would not like to be accentuated by the adding of the shimmy powder to your face, would highly, highly, highly recommend these highlighters. They're absolutely stunning. Star Island is one of those ones I can wear it year round. It's a shade that I mix with others. I use this one to tone down Rodeo Drive, which is an absolutely beautiful gold, but I don't exactly have a gold accepting complexion. It doesn't look like naturalness on my skin tone, so I use this gold, which is kind of more like a champagne gold to just even out my, uh, the tone. Love this formula. Love Star Island. I remember I was like gonna try Ofra and I was like, well, they're an influencer brand. How good can they be? And I bit that bullet and I have never looked back since. Let's talk 
Hey, Becca, ignore the fancy bougie bougie limited edition packaging. This shade is now permanent, but we have the gloriousness of vanilla quartz. I wanted to do the golden mint shade, which is the kind of champagne-y white gold they have with a greeny reflect, because y'all know that is probably my ultimate favorite type of highlighter, but that is a limited edition one that they have not made permanent, and I wanted to talk about permanent highlighters. I could talk about limited edition highlighters. If y'all want me to do a video about top 10 limited edition highlighters, by all means. But for the sake of today's video, we're doing permanent, and this one, again, for the pasty pasty person that wants to be gold, this is just a beautiful, I am not the biggest fan advocate for Becca's highlighter formula, believe it or not. But this one is this perfect, warm, yellowy with just a hint, just a titch of sparkly reflect and I just spit everywhere. It's been a long day, this is like the fourth video I've filmed, but it is just this absolutely stunning. I would recommend if you are fair and you're not really into like cool tones and you want something that's going to be more ethereal and otherworldly and vaguely threatening than kind of like a streak on your cheek, I would recommend Vanilla Quartz over Pearl just about any day because it is just so flattering, absolutely stunning. If all Becca highlighters were formulated like this shiz and like Golden Mint and like Prismatic Amethyst and all that shiz, I would own, I mean, I own most of them. I would tout their formula a little bit more. Gotta have an indie brand up in here. The Give Me Glow, ever so Instagram, ever so coveted, ever so sold out, Halo. And this is a true white, gold, yellowy, greeny, fantasy sort of shade. Let's see if we can get this. I'm gonna put this one right on top where it deserves to be. Do you see the reflection? This is just all kinds of high shine, metallic, sheeny butter up on your cheekbones. It is so stunning. I do find that I like mixing it sometimes with something like the Ofra Star Island to maybe take that metallic streakness down just a little bit to make it a little bit more wearable. But it is so beautiful. I would honestly, like with all of these, I would recommend all the highlighters in their formula, but this one is just so, and it's like, what I love about it is it's such a strange, intense, yellow, greeny gold that it's not just for pasty paste. I've seen this on some deep, dark, delicious melanin, and it was like frosting on top of it, and it was so pretty. It's just such a high shine, intense ka cha 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 When I was finally able to get my hands on this shiz, I can't tell you how many of y'all were like, you need it, and I'm like, I know I need it, but it's always sold out. And I can't remember what order I was making. I think that was probably what made me decide to do the order, because it was in stock, and I was like, well, that's not gonna be there for very long. I might as well get it now. And it's absolutely amazing. Obviously, I've got to talk about my Natasha Denona Super Glow. This is such a... I need her to come out with more shades of this. This one is in Fair. I also have Fair Light. And this is just such a... It's, it, it swatches like crap. Oh, that was sad. Oh, that was pitiful. That is so sad. Why you do that to me on camera? Why you do me dirty like that? I feel like it's conducive to hard pan when you do it with your finger because the oils tend to make things go hard pan. But on the skin, this highlighter is so radiant, so healthy. I would recommend this for someone if you've got mature, I mean, if you've got any type of skin, if you've got skin and you like highlighter, get this shiz. But if you're wanting something, you know, bridal, you're wanting something prom, you're wanting to look like a just glowing from within goddess, then this is definitely something you need to look into because the formula is just so smooth and almost glass-like on the skin. You're very like 
glazed, not in like a donut frosty way, glazed in like a skin, your skin looks like just like glossy glass sheeniness. And to have that from a powder for someone who has the dry skin, that is quite the fantastical accomplishment. I love these so much. I bought these at a time where I was just like, oh, well, I need to try highlighter from every brand because I don't have any impulse control and I'm just gonna buy all the highlighter. And both of these ended up being, I just, I use them interchangeably. They're just so, I know when I pull this highlight, it just blends seamlessly into my skin, into my other products, into my foundation, my concealer, my everything. It just melts so beautifully into your complexion. Love it. Worth every single penny. This is $38. Would recommend it over most of Becca's highlighters. Then we might as well talk about another highlighter if we're talking about highlighters that I bought to buy. We have the Ciate London Glow 2 Highlighters. This one specifically is in the shade Starburst, which is another beautiful, a little bit more intense, a little bit more true gold, pale person friendly gold, but this is so beautiful. I always say that this is like what the KVD, what her metal crush highlighters were trying to do, but significantly better because they're the, there's that glossy, thin, like just glossy, I guess is the word. It's a thin, it's not a thick, heavy highlighter texture. It just has that thin veil of like shimmy pigment and then suspended within it is just a hint, just a touch, just a titch of sparkle. And it's not smart sparkle that travels all throughout your face. It's not sparkle that goes all up into the atmosphere. It's sparkle that stays where you put it. You put a little setting spray on that shiz and you are good to go. They're just so stinking pretty. I mean, I love disgustingly, disgustingly underrated highlighter. It's just so pretty. You can even see in the pan, there's just a little, a little, little shiftiness, a little bit of twinkle, a little bit of something. And that I know has turned off a lot of people when they talk about these and they look in the pan. I'm like, but just use it. Just, just put it on your cheekbones, put a little setting spray on it and you are so good to go. It is just absolutely stupid. Dunning. I mean, looking at all these highlighters, I just want to be like, mm. Then we're going to talk about a highlighter formula that took me a while to master. It wasn't just a one dip in the brush and you're good to go. But from Melt Cosmetics, this is their digital dust highlighter. And I am not going to be talking about the pasty pasty skin appropriate one. I'm going to be talking about the one in Genesis, which is a highlighter on its own is clearly not suited for my complexion. What? This is a highlighty blush topper is absolutely amazing. That swatch is not going to do it any kind of justice. But if I have any sort of peachy or orangey or corally or rosy blush and it's matte, or if it's, you know, shimmy, shiny, whatever, and I just want to jack it up to Jesus, this is what I will go for. I love the Digital Dust formula because it's, once again, it's very thin. It's like a veil of highlighter that gives you a lot of impact without it being thick and cakey on the skin. And this is just like, I've used it on its own. Just straight up blush me up with this shiz. And it's so beautiful and so stunning. I mean, like I was looking at the other one, I'm like, yeah, that one's kind of more your complexion, but this one is just such a beautiful and unique shade that works in so many different ways with so many different skin tones. If you dark, deep, delicious melanin, just slap this shiz all up on your cheekbones and be highlighty like a peachy, glorious god, goddess, they or them. You know, you pasty pasty. I mean, if you want to do this all up on your cheekbones, you do that, but you just, just grace it, grace it across the high points of your cheeks and you will look healthy 
dewy, delicious, and decadent. I mean, I bought this because I was just like, oh, I think I had when they released this shade, a couple of y'all like uh, messaged me or whatever. I'm like, have you seen this shade? That's something you need. And I'm like, I know, but I don't really need it. And then I bought it and it's absolutely amazing. Then we have to talk about a highlighter that would not be on this list if it were not for one of y'all wonderful people who sent me the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. This is the highlighter shade that they released in that, I think it was like the six pan palettes that they do for holiday. They also had it in a three pan palette, but people were all like, you need cookie. Cookie is the highlighter that everyone needs. Everyone was going like all cookie monster <laughs> over this shiz. I wanted it so bad, so bad. The highlighter aficionado lost whatever person in me needed this Shiz, I couldn't, wasn't cruelty free, and then one blessed glorious day. <laughs> I mean, pink you one too. See if I could swatch this without absolutely, I hate benefit packaging. Oh, my stuff. I know I do this to myself with having, you know, long nails, but at the same time, benefit packaging just sucks. We're gonna do that right. Oh, <gasps> it's so pretty. It's like metallic. But, uh, and this is again, one of those like more thinly, just like veiled products. You know, it's something that just like graces, glazes, grazes, glaces, grr, glides seamlessly across the skin. It's like the heavenliest of pigments and they've taken it and they've pressed it into a powder format and turned it into a highlighter just for me. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. It is everything that everybody has said and more. And I feel like with highlighters of like today rather than highlighters of like olden time, they used to be thicker because I feel like shimmer shadows or shimmer products were just like a thicker consistency. But now as we've like learned to formulate things for the face, good formulas have become thinner while still being able to pack a lot of shimmy shiny punch into these things. I mean, just look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And I love it because it looks so, because you're like, oh, oh, we don't have anything on our face. And then you're like, oh, wait. Oh wait, oh wait. It's like just so perfect. It's that beautiful mix between like, oh, I'm just healthy and natural and radiant to like, cha, I am ethereal, otherworldly and vaguely threatening. Love it. The transition is just absolutely perfect. Okay, now we're gonna talk about three that I don't have on hand. It, all right. We are obviously going to be talking about the Manny MUA Luna Beauty Moon Prism Powder Highlighters. I mean, packaging aside, I didn't bring them with me to Tennessee. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe I'm just dumb. I am trying so hard to remember. I'm not even going to try to say the name. I'll have the picture up and I'll have the name, the shade name with it. But this one, again, is such a perfect, perfect, pale person, friendly, white, yellowy, beautiful, champagne-y gold. I mean, it is just such, his highlighter formula deserves to have a range as big as the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors. These things are just so smooth, so finely milled, so beautifully done. They just pick up effortlessly with a brush. They just smooth onto your skin. And this shade is the closest. This, this shade is one of the closest things I have come to finding as a dupe for the KVD Metal Crush Shadow in Thunderstruck, which has been one of my all time end all be all pale person friendly highlighters where it's just got that shift where it looks light and highlighty, but then it shifts and it's very warm and healthy and just luminous. If you were ever a fan of that KVD eyeshadow, would highly, highly recommend getting this highlighter from Manny MUA because it is 
stunning. Another indie brand. I would be ever so negligent if I were not to include one from the Kaleidos range. And this was a hard one. I literally had to like go back and watch some of my videos where I was like swatching and talking about these because I don't have them on hand. And I was like, mm, which one it gonna be though? Again, I can't pull the name up off the top of my head. So I will insert picture and name and this highlighter. Y'all know your girl likes her glowy, just sort of, you know, day-to-day -day highlighters, but I also like my highlighters that make me look like an intergalactic alien creature. I like looking like if we were going to take the Twilight vampires and we put them on crack. That is what I am. That is my aesthetic. I aspire to be. And this highlighter does it in spades. It is this beautiful, mixture of, again, that thinly veiled pigment that just gives you that glossy sheen on your skin. And then when you turn ever so unsuspectingly and you blind every single person in your path with that beautiful effervescent layer of shifting goodness. It is a moment quite like any other, and I have been trying to chase and find that high ever since. You are a highlighter junkie. You need to try this shiz. It will change your life. And then we might as well talk about a highlighter from Too Faced that's actually mostly somewhat good. Y'all know I have issues with their inconsistent highlighter formula. I'm like, just, just, just come on, just come up with something. Just pick something and stick with it. But probably my favorite, at least in the permanent range, is going to be the Diamond Fire something. That first diamond box, whatever highlighter they did that's all swirled and whatever. And Jared was like, well, it's amazing because you swirl your brush in it in different ways and you get different colors. I'm like, yeah, Jared, that's called like marbling and shiz. But all whatever's aside, this is a very pretty, very ethereal, princessy, classically eerie iridescent highlighter. I wouldn't say it's like, you know, multi-chrome or freakishly multifaceted. It's kind of like a less intense version of the KVD Alchemist palette, those kind of highlighters that have got that like base color and then they shift really intensely. The diamond one from Too Faced is kind of like a icy, pinky that kind of has a little bit of gold, a little bit of blue. You know, it's got a bunch of different varying undertones that make it, you know, a very unique and a very beautiful highlighter. And from all the stuff that I've tried from Too Faced, I'm like, that's it. That's the one that I can actually F with. That's the one that I still have in my collection. But that was obviously just 10. I could probably figure out how to do 10 more. I'm not sure how much I've beaten this particular theme to death yet. Would love to hear what y'all have to say about the highlighters I talked about. Obviously, I could talk about highlighter until the day I die. I will be buried in it. I will be buried slathered in it. Would love to hear what y'all have to say about these as well as a highlighter from a brand that you think is one of their best things ever. Like just, you know, you're just like, all right, what's the best highlighter for you? I would say, you know, from a brand. Go buck wild, people. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah.